Tom here from Lawrence Systems and in version 9.4, Unify added their new policy engine. This is much more than a UI enhancement. It's a much easier way to build rules, policies, and manage your network and devices. Instead of hunting through firewalls, VLANs, and ECLs, you can now build intent-based policies and objects that apply and follow the devices on your network, making it much easier to manage. This video is not sponsored by Unify, but it is sponsored by me. If you are looking to hire someone to design, set up, or review your network, help you with a virtualization project, or you need help solving a storage problem, head over to lawrencesystems.com, click that Hires button at the top, and while you're there, you can grab a shirt like the one I'm wearing if you just want to check out our swag store. Now let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now a prerequisite for running this is having at least Unify OS 4.3.6 and Unify Network Application 9.4.19. Also, if you have any policies in place when you're on a previous version, they will be converted to the new policy engine. The policies I had before, I didn't have to do any recreation. They all just showed up after the update. Now, when we go over to our policy engine. We have the policy table, we have zones, and we have objects. Starting at the policy table, this is a nice consolidation as opposed to having a lot of menus. Before, we were adding more and more menus under these sections here. This would be a little bit challenging, and I'll admit they have done a nice job of this if you use a search where you can find things relatively easy because there's a lot of different options in Unify. But with the policies, we put all the policies in one place, and we can do things like filter them to view or not view default policies, or maybe you want to go right to the DNS records or just the firewall rules. Now, you can still set the firewall rules up under the zone firewall, and those still exist here. So this hasn't changed. This is a, another way to manage the firewall rules. They're one and the same. This is, in my opinion, a much easier way to view specifically the firewall rules that we created. So if we uncheck this and I only want to see the rules that I've created, they're in this one nice, very clear list. And clicking on any of these brings up the same menu as you would see in the zone firewall. So there's not anything particularly different between them, it's just a different way to view, access, and of course, filter when you have a lot of rules. Also, when you have it on any of these options here, you have the ability to search the policy table and narrow down to exactly what you're looking for. Once again, it becomes very handy when you start having a lot of rules and you wanna get exactly to something like a policy-based route. Now, as far as creating new rules, we go here to create new policy and we have the option for firewall, route, quality of service, NAT, DNS, ACL, and even port forwarding is here. So nothing's really changed in terms of functionality if you've already were on the zone-based firewalls. This is the same menu since version nine, just all grouped together under the policy engine. Now, as far as making changes to existing policies, if you click on them, it brings up the menu, then you can change any of the settings, hit apply, but we're gonna cancel that. And we have the ability here to hit manage. This is always at the bottom when you show this. So you could do a selection and remove or pause those policies. Let's go ahead and hit done. And this also applies, for example, let's go to the DNS or really I could filter through any of these or even my firewall rules. That manage option is right here. So I would be able to, if I needed to take all of these, I want to pause them in bulk or filter them by some other parameters and be able to select a group of them that have a certain name and be able to pause them or just remove them. So right here it says block RFC 1918. We'll click done. Let's filter for that specifically. And here's the rules. And now I can manage just those rules, pause or remove them. Now I have a dedicated video on how the zone-based firewall works and that has not changed. Ever since version nine, this has been available and it's not any different here in 9.4, other than you can now see things under the policy table. Going over here to the objects, this is the new version of object-oriented networking and intuitive experience for power users. This will create the policies in a slightly different way. They're still gonna show up under policy table, but they're a different way that makes it a little bit easier and adds a few other features in here that I think are really nice that makes it clear what you're doing. And let's first stop over here into the client devices and talk about groups. So I have a group, for example, with my wife's devices. 
her phone, which kind of funny, it shows up as Red Hat, but it is a Pixel 7 phone. She has her personal Mac and her work Mac. And if you notice, they're on different networks and I've just created these as a group. The groups is a really nice feature because I can do things like grab my three TrueNAS boxes that I have and I've added them to this group. As far as editing or adding something to a group on any device you have, you would go to the edit and I can even make it part of more than one group if I want, or even remove it from a group right here. Just click save and you can create new groups and any device can be part of different groups. The groups matter because they make it really convenient when you're back over here at the object oriented networking. Now let's start with a example. We'll type CAS and we can select the CAS group. And then we can apply a specific policy. For example, if we wanted to route all my wife's traffic out a specific VPN, such as the PA Chicago, I click click add and it will create that. That would probably bother her right now because I think she's working. So let's go ahead and use my test one here. I only have one device in test. We'll just rename this test. And that's what I want to do is route this out PIA Chicago. Click add. Now I've created this unified policy test. It's just a Linux machine and it will now route the traffic out. As far as where that shows up, well, let's go over here. If we look at the policy table and we look at test, we can expand out and see this test. And it tells me what it's doing. It's source, interface, PA Chicago, destination port, any. And we don't have the normal edit that comes up here because it brings us back to the object oriented. Because what this allows us to do as well is check other things. Like let's go ahead and route out that, but at the same time, let's set some bandwidth limits. And maybe we want those daily during this time or weekly during this time, et cetera, or one time. It's got some interesting policies you can set here or just leave it at always. Or you can maybe only say specific apps that you wanna have this feature for. So we'll filter for the AOL apps. And now we've got a QoS only for these AOL apps to this particular speed. I think it should deserve lower. AOL is not that important. And now we have this policy. Maybe we want a secure policy for a block list or allow list, but you can stack these together, hit save. And now these policies are all applied. If we go back over to the policy table and expand this out, we have the policy base route and then the quality of service here. So we're still able to view the details of it, but once again, it'll just bring us to the open object page. Now for this demonstration, I did choose to use the client groups, but they're not required. You can simply select specific devices and apply these policies, but it's either or. So I've selected a few devices and they show up here under selected. But if I changed back to group, it's only gonna let me use group. So it's either or, but not simultaneously both. That's why these are all grayed out. I think the groups are an easier way to do this, but they give you the flexibility to do it whichever way works. Something of note when you're searching. So if we select a couple things labeled Tom, and then we clear this, you can see the selected is now showing five, and I can then do a search for more. So it's not hard to group a bunch of devices together, provided you know the names of those devices or remove them to get this list and then hit save to apply these policies. Now the policies can also be applied to networks such as this lab or this network or this network. And I can create a policy around these options just like I can anything else. One thing of note, when you choose secure, and let's say we want no internet and we wanna do this on a schedule, for example, that's great, but we can also block list, allow list, networks, MAC addresses, et cetera, or go full quarantine and just say, lock this device down locally. When you lock it down locally, it will also stop lateral movement as in it will not be able to ping or reach other things on the network. I like that they added a local option here. So this is the internet options and these are the local options as they're being applied. Now a quick troubleshooting tip you may run into around phones and maybe some other devices as well, but phones are, well, becoming more privacy oriented, which is a good thing. And that means some models have the ability to rotate their MAC address when they connect to different SSIDs. Now, normally the policy follows the device based on the MAC address because that's the unique identifier. So if you have one of these devices that rotates the MAC address, whether it's Apple or Android, that will cause some tracking problems internally, which it's the goal of the phone to be more privacy oriented, but when it's connecting to your network and it does it, I know there's some options you can go into and turn that off on the phones that have that feature, but just something to take into consideration if you're trying to figure out why suddenly the phone is not on the privacy VPN that you thought it was and you're trying to figure out what happened to it. So 
little note there. Now, if you like the Policy Engine, let me know. If you hate it, also let me know. I'm kind of curious. Do you like these new features? Do you like the new object-oriented way that Unify is going with this? Or it's just something you're like, yeah, this is silly. Either way, love hearing from all of you. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion on this, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com. Hit me up on all the socials at lawrencesystems.com and check out my Unify playlist for a lot of other tutorials I've done, such as DNS, the zone-based firewall, etc. You'll find those all linked below. Thanks.